initially they were excluded because of the affiliation rule, meaning if you had a venture capital uh, investor in your startup, uh, then you had to count not only the employees in your startup, but the employees of every startup that that venture capitalist invested in, and that would be more than 500. Uh, fortunately, uh, Speaker Pelosi and I uh, wrote to Steve Mnuchin. We called the White House. Uh, others called him as well. And my understanding is he's, he has made it clear that when it comes at least to the venture capital back startups, that he is going to waive uh, that affiliation rule for this program. Uh, we're still waiting for the final guidance. But if that happens, the startup community would be able to apply. So, so you're not accusing the White House or, or any of the parties here of purposefully excluding it? No. I mean, look, this has been the rule on the books for many, many years. The problem is that uh, in a situation like this, they needed to modernize those rules. I mean, the, let's be clear on who's going to get hurt. If startups don't get these loans, the venture capitalists aren't going to get hurt. Uh, they still are going to be sitting on their $100 million funds. The people who are going to lose their jobs are the administrative assistants, the engineers, everyone working for that company, many of them uh, blue-collar workers. And then people often say, well, why can't they just go to the venture capitalist and uh, get more money? First of all, venture capitalists aren't in a charity business, so they may not get the money. And secondly, the venture capitalists may insist on layoffs to get the money. So if we really want these startups to be able to maintain their payroll, uh, they should be able to qualify for these loans. Give us a sense of, of what you're hearing from the startups in California with the state pretty much shut down. It has been now for, for a while, it was one of the early, earlier states to do so. How much pain is there out there? Well, it's very hard. As, as you know, there's already the concept of the valley of death. And that means that most startups for their first few years uh, lose more money uh, than they have in revenue. And that's the hardest time. Now, you add to that uh, this hit, whereas a lot of startups have gotten almost no revenue the last month and don't see revenue coming in for a few months, and they're really hurting. And many of them are struggling just to maintain uh, the uh, employee base. We're talking about thousands of jobs. In fact, one report estimated that the total startups in this country account for a million jobs, potentially, that could be lost. And that's why they need these loans, and they need them immediately. I appreciate your previous guest as a bank getting these loans out, because the second problem is that we've got to get these loans out the door. These startup companies, this is a matter of days that they're making decisions on layoffs or not. Yeah, we've, we've heard all sorts of reports. Some gone smoothly, some have hiccups. I wanted to ask you, Congressman, about the next potential phase of this release package. What are you hearing? How, how close are we? We've heard everything from infrastructure to industries like cruise ships and restaurants that need to be included. What are, what are you fighting for? Well, certainly infrastructure has to be part of it and uh, infrastructure for science and technology as well. I mean, this was a public health crisis. I wish we had invested more in uh, going after vaccine uh, development and invest more in the CDC so we had testing infrastructure. I mean, the CDC is 1.5 percent of the amount of we put in national defense. And I think most Americans realize now that we need more public health protection to keep us safe. Uh, the, the second thing is, look, the president talked about expanding Medicare uh, for those who are unemployed. I would support him if he wants, if he's serious about that. Uh, if people have lost their health care, there are going to be almost 30 million people unemployed temporarily uh, for five, six, ten months. Why don't we give them Medicare? That would cost less than all of the bailout we did for industry. Uh, so those are my focus. My focus is this is a public health crisis. Uh, how do we make the appropriate health, health, health investments? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like things are, are moving in a bipartisan way for a change, which is very good to see. You know, that has been uh, one thing that, that is true. I mean, uh, look, this is not a, uh, a crisis that's political. There are people literally dying. Mm -hmm. There are almost uh, 40 people who have died in my district. There are over 5,000 Americans who have died. Uh, and people are hurting. They're losing their businesses they're, uh, that they've spent their whole lives building. Uh, they're struggling to pay rent. They're wondering how they're going to pay their bills. Uh, politics really doesn't matter at this time. It, we're all Americans. We need to just come together and do what the best we can for people. Yeah, amen to that. Uh, Congressman, thank you for joining me. Thank Rukana you. Rukana from California.